Hello, my name is Elizabeth, and today I'm going to be covering the basics of Power Query. We'll go over what Power Query is, what it's useful for, and how you can integrate it into your everyday Excel work. So I'm going to head on over to my workbook, and we're going to get started. Okay, here I have two tables. One of them is going to be sales data, and the other one's going to be customer info. What we're going to do is we're going to use Power Query to merge these tables together. We're gonna do a little bit of data transformation and clean up on these tables, and then we're going to output it into Excel as a pivot table to be able to have a very presentable form of data that you would then pass on to an end user. The first step is always to get this, this data and the customer info data into a table. Once we get it into a table, we can load it straight into Power Query. So you can highlight your data Alternatively, you can just press Control A to get everything on that page highlighted if that's the page. And then what you can do is press Control T. This will bring up a table. That table does have headers. I'm gonna press OK. Perfect. And we got a table name up here, table one. I'm gonna rename this sales right there. I just note when you are naming tables, make sure there's no spaces. If I put sales table, it won't let me. So you can go sales underscore table and that'll be good. Going over to customer info, this one I'm gonna do it a little bit different. I'm gonna highlight everything. I'm gonna to go to the insert tab and insert table. This is the exact same thing as pressing control T. My table does have headers. I select okay, good to go there. I'm gonna name this customer. Perfect, now we are ready to bring our data into Power Query. Currently, these are two just tables inside this document. So I'm gonna click anywhere in the first table right here, sales table. I'm going to go to the data tab right here, and I'm gonna select from table and range. What this does is this will immediately put our data into Power Query when I select it. As you can see, this launched our Power Query editing box. Over here, you can see our query name. It'll automatically pull in that name of the table, and especially if you have a few tables hanging around, it's really useful to name your tables in this situation. I need to now bring in my second table. So I'm gonna close this table, and I'm not gonna load it anywhere. So there's a few different options. So I'm gonna close here. I'm not just gonna exit out because it won't save it. So I'm gonna go to close and load. I'm gonna click close and load two right here, the second option. And then now it's going to ask me, do I want to load this data? I'm not ready to load this data yet. So I'm going to select uh, only create connection and select OK. You can always change that later. So you can see now we have a queries and connections pop up over here. This popped up. We got our sales table right over here. If you want to get this box back, you can exit out. You can go to the data tab and click queries and connections. That'll always bring your data right back there. I'm going to do the same thing with the customer table. Click into the customer table. Click from table and range, pop it up. As you can see, perfect, now I got both of my tables in here. I've got a customer and my sales table. Now you might be wondering, why would I come in here to merge my data instead of doing it in Excel? A few different reasons. Uh, most importantly for me, if I'm handing this off to an end user, I don't want the end user to be able to break anything or change anything. So if I do it in the background in Power Query and I clean it up in here, it's going to be a lot less clunky for my end user. So that's something I really enjoy. Going in here, uh, you can see that we have a common key. So I'm gonna do some merges and then we'll do some transformations. When you load your table into Power Query, Power Query will automatically pick up the, the text or source type uh, for each column. So you can see here, order ID, customer ID, it's changed it to an integer. Uh, this is gonna be a text type. You can see the data type up here as well. Quantity, price, everything looks good except date. So date needs a little bit of help here. It's picking up date as a whole number. So what I'm gonna do, since I'm still on this change type right here, it will uh, implement it in this step order. So you can see over here, we've got two steps so far. We have our source and we have our type change, which are gonna be automatic steps in Power Query. If I select the date column and hit the drop down right here, I want to tell it that this is a date. I just select date. It's gonna ask me, do I want to convert the current date data type? 
and I want to, I want to replace current right here so I don't add a new step because we don't need a new step here. I'm going to replace it and as you can see now it's a date. I'll give you a little date indicator on the side. Uh, Power Query is pretty good about giving you little indicators as to what, uh, what type of data this is. We can go over to our customer table too and make sure all of the, um, everything's in the same format. So right here, customer ID looks good. And then all three columns, customer name, email, and region are all going to be text um, data types. And that's perfect. Something really important when you're merging data in Power Query is to make sure the columns that you're merging upon. So in this case, we're gonna be merging on customer ID. We wanna make sure they're the same type. If they're not the same type, they will normally have trouble merging. So we've checked it's a whole number, head on back over here, and we got another whole number for customer ID. So I'm going to merge my customer data onto my sales table right here. So I'm gonna pop it up here. I'm actually gonna make a new table to keep this separated. So I'm looking for this merge queries button up here on the home tab. I'm gonna hit the little drop down. I'm gonna merge queries as new. That'll make a new separate table over here. And it's gonna ask me, okay, I got my sales table. What would I like to merge it to? I'm gonna merge it to my customer table. And what are what is my common um, column? And right now it's gonna be customer ID. You can have more than one column, that a common column too. If you had, for instance, a customer ID and date and you wanted to merge on two, you would just hold the control button and you can click a second option right there. I'm gonna unclick these because we only have a customer ID as far as our merge. Uh, typically, you're gonna be dealing with a left-hand merge, but not always. So left, what that means, it's gonna take everything from our first table. So everything's gonna be included in our sales table, but it's only gonna take matching columns from our second table. So I'll give you an example here. If we had a customer ID that was missing and was not part of the sales table, which is very common, they're only gonna show up in this and they will not be brought into this merge. If you want to see that customer, even if they don't have any sales history, you are going to do a full outer join right here. So what you're going to do is that will bring in all columns from both tables. But in most situations, you're going to want to do a left outer join. There's a few other different uh, join types down here and uh, in specific situations you would use them, but the most common is going to be our left outer and then our full outer join. At this point, I can tell if I get this little check mark down here, it's saying that 15 out of 15 rows are matching. It's okay if not every row has a match. Uh, that's super common with data and that's where you go in and do some cleanup. But uh, I do look for this indicator just to make sure that our uh, column types are the same and we do have kind of easy matching. So select okay. And as you can see, this loaded onto another page called merge one. I've got my customer data right here. And I'm going to expand this. So um, when I click this little button right here, I'm going to get a pop up and it's going to ask me basically which ones I want to expand. In this case, I don't need the customer ID since we already have it, but I'm going to expand customer name, email and region. Um, and this is asking, do I want to use the original column name um, as a prefix? Do I want to put it in front of the the name of the, the new columns, and I don't because there's no matching columns, and matching name columns over here. If I was to add customer ID, I would keep this selected. I'll show you what this does. If I press okay, it adds that table name in front of, it, it qualifies your, your column, it adds the table name in front of your column name. I'm gonna double click in here to get back to this, and I'm actually going to wipe that. I don't want a column prefix, perfect. And I also didn't want a customer ID, so taking that away. Awesome, so now you can see we have a full table with customer name, email, region. As you can see, the customer names are gonna repeat because uh, one customer then has bought multiple items. Uh, looking through this and to see if we need any more cleanup, maybe not cleanup, but something I want is I want some gross revenue in here. And this is something I can put in Power Query or I can do it uh, in a pivot table. But I'm going to, for the sake of this video, we're going to put this column in here. So a simple, this is a very simple formula. We want quantity times price. I'm going to go up to add a column. I'm going to select custom column right here. I'm going to go down and name this gross revenue. And pretty simple, we're just gonna do price times 
times quantity and select OK. Perfect. Now we got gross revenue over here, price quantity. Let's see if there's anything else we want. It looks like I want to add if there's a day of the week. Uh, we want to see if there's any purchasing, any specific purchasing on specific days of the week. So I'm going to add that to this data set. Something really cool, uh, Power Query is great with date functions. It can help you out. Um, so I'm going to use one of the pre-built functions in here to do that. So I selected the date column. I'm going to go to Transform. Actually, I'm going to go to Add Column because I want a separate column. Transform is if I want to do uh, perform an action on the column I have selected. I'm going to go to Add Column if I want a separate column. So they have a lot of the same features, but I do want a separate column here because it is important that I keep the date. I'm going to go down to Day, and I'm going to select Day of the Week. And I did select Day of the Week over there. Those are numbers. I actually, you know what, I want, um, I want the name. So I'm going to go to Transform now on this column, or I could just delete the step and go back, either or. So here I um, actually want the name of the week. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to go over here to my steps, my applied steps right here. And I'm just going to exit, go back, select date, select add column, do the drop down. I'm going to do days and I'm going to do name of day right here. Perfect. Now if I scroll over, you're going to see perfect. I got my day name here. I can rename this column if I want by double clicking in the header. I can also rename it by coming up here to the uh, code box, but I'm going to leave it because that's um, that'll fit the bill for what I need. Going on back, I'm going to rename this um, full sales and customer table. And now we're ready to load it back into Excel. I'm going to go up here, hit the file tab. I want to close and load two right here. Now, since I didn't close and load my customer table, it's going to load it the same way. If I select table for both, they're going to both load into a table. So I'm going to actually select create uh, connection only, select OK, wait for them to load. I'm going to create a new sheet. And now I'm going to reload this table. So I'm going to right click on this side, queries and connections. We got there by going to data, queries and connections. And I'm going to go load to, and this time I'm only going to be loading one table. I want to load it to a pivot table report. And I want to load it in cell 14. And select OK. Now I've got a pivot table popping up over here. I have my pivot table preset as a the classic style pivot table. Some of yours might look a little bit different. That is just fine. It will still work. Coming down, I want to select, I want to find out which region has the highest grossing margin. So super easy now. We select region and we select gross revenue. And we can easily tell that the east region is the highest grossing region. Uh, we can add more to this and I do have videos on pivot tables if you want to spend more time learning how to use pivot tables. I hope you found this video helpful and I hope that you kind of learned a little bit more about Power Query. Have a good day.